important is that even if you perform a successful operation, your hands, the poison in your fingertips will kill the patient. They did not have proper antiseptics. They washed their hands in water. They found Africans were using sterile antiseptics. They saw how they cut. They saw how they collapsed the abdominal wall. They saw how they took the baby out. They saw how they were able to take the cautery iron and stop internal bleeding almost instantly with minor tissue damage. They saw how the Africans stitched, they drew the stitches, they brought it back to Europe, and the caesarean operation after that was performed with far greater success. Nobody knows, unless you study the history of medicine, that that was what happened. Now let me close because I can go on forever. <coughs> I'm so warm by the great crowd tonight, but we have to close. There, there are other things. First of all, we have the slides which will go beyond the question of Egypt. But let me close by paying tribute now to Sheikh Antibia. I want, in closing, to quote a poem. I want, in closing, to quote a poem which was written by Martin Carter, my countryman, on the death of my father. It is called Death of a Comrade. And it is very apt, I feel, with the grief that one felt in the passing of a great brother and friend and colleague, as well as the great hope that springs out of knowing that nothing really dies. Too soon, too soon, the banner draped for you. I would prefer a banner in the wind, not bound so tightly with a scarlet fold, not sodden, sodden with your people's tears, but borne aloft, down and beyond this dark, dark lane of rags. Dear comrade, if it must be, that I no longer speak with you, no longer walk with you, no longer march with you, then I must take a patience and a calm, for even now a greener leaf explodes, sun brightens stones, and all the rivers burn. Now from the morning vanguard moving on, their comrade, I salute you and I say, death shall not find us thinking that we die. Thank you. We want to provide an opportunity for you to ask questions. I know that you really have enjoyed what Dr. Van Sudderman has had to say here tonight. Uh, can we give him again another round of applause? You'll have to come to the edge of the stage in order to ask your questions. We don't have microphones out in the... Uh, in the aisles. Uh, microphone. Uh, first of all, thank you. Uh, Speak loudly. Um, the question is about Atlantis. What is my comment on that civilization? 
I do not know that there is such a civilization. It is possible that in the coming future one may discover hard evidence of the existence of Atlantis, but I do not know that Atlantis exists. Okay, that's the answer to the question. Okay, this is a question about the book edited by me, Nile Valley Civilizations. This will come out in late July. And this is a question about Jesus. Um, the speaker, the questioner, th does not think that Jesus was an actual person and seeking my opinion on this. Now, there are very strong views about this. I personally believe that Jesus was a living individual. The fact that many of the myths that were planted on the skeletal history of the individual life, many of the things that came from the past, Many of the things that came out of Egypt were planted on Jesus after his death. does not mean that he did not exist as an individual. My feeling that he did exist as an individual is because his sayings, not the mere philosophy as such, because there's nothing new under the sun, the way in which he spoke of certain things, and the peculiar acts, some of which have no precedence whatsoever in the earlier world in that particular way in which it occurred convinces me that we are dealing with an individual reality. Whether he came back from the dead, that is another matter. That is a matter of faith. But if the question is whether I believe that he existed as an individual, I say yes. And in fact, we do have a coin struck in the second century AD by the Romans in the reign of Justinian II in which we have the European emperor the Roman Emperor Justinian II on one side, clearly a European, and on the other side we have a dark brown man with woolly hair and a Semitic nose, which is represented, the first physical representation of Jesus, a mixture perhaps of the Semitic type and the African, and what you would call an Afro-Semite. Whether that actually represents the actual Jesus, we do not know. We only present it because it's the first physical representation attempted of Jesus, the Christ. The question is, how can we structure our educational system so that our young people can receive these truths in mass. <laughs> now this has to become a crusade that involves all of us. Please remember that, in, that a person can only do so much and no more. It literally takes me all of my energy to speak in 20 to 25 states to edit a journal to teach at, a un at my university, etc. I cannot take charge of the educational system of the United States. Okay. We have to remember not to rely on a few people to do something like this. Most of us... Most of us who are involved in this field, even though we are no longer alone, alone and we are in, in a school, we have no power to change the system. But we have a power in this sense that by building a responsible body of work, a responsible body of new history, this will eventually impact on a great number of people. In each state, you have to have educational boards or you have to have teachers who take it upon themselves after we as educators have created the literature, take it upon themselves to introduce that to their children and to their school. There are nine title journals 
half of them are now in print. All of them will be in print at the end.